In this video, I'll show you how to check if the answer a user provides to your question has already been submitted. This is useful for situations where you want to avoid capturing the same user's email twice. The first thing I want to do is ask my user for their email. To do this, I'll use the email address card and I'll just change the message to something like, what is your email? I'll make sure to store that in a variable called user email. Now, when they provide their email, what I want to happen is that email will get logged in the simple table I have set up in this column here, email. What I want to avoid happening is that if they've already submitted their email, I don't want to capture the same one twice. So now, before we add the email they submitted to our table, let's see if it already exists. To do this, I'll use a simple find records card. I'll pop it into my node right after I ask for their email. And in the menu here, I'm going to select the email I wanted to search for. Then in the records filter option, this is what I'm going to type in. I'll say the value email is equal to, and then the value of the variable in which we've stored their email. In this case, that's user email. Now, this was a search that we've performed and all searches have a result. So I'm going to store the result in a simple variable called output. Now, if that email has already been submitted, I want to send my user down a separate path. To do this, I'll use an expression card. So I'll just drag one over into my node. And now I want to define the conditions for this transition. Typically, this is done via code, but BotPress makes this super simple. So in this label here, I'm just going to give it the prompt if the variable output, remember, this is the result of our search, has at least one item in the array. I'll hit enter and the code is going to be generated for me automatically. Now from this port, I'll just draw a new path into a new node and I'll just send a simple message. Something like, oops, looks like we already have that email. So I'll use the variable for it on file. Care to submit another? Cool. Now, if the user's email isn't in our table, I want to insert it. To do that, I'll use the insert record card. And now I'll populate the insert record card as follows. I'll select the correct table, and it's going to ask me which information do you want to put in the email column. In this case, I'm just going to put the variable user email, which is where we've stored the answer to that question. Remember, the only way a user will end up at this card is if the email hasn't already existed in that table. Otherwise, they'll get sent down this path. Cool. To make sure that this is working, I'm going to send a text message card at the end of this node, confirming that we've received the user's email. So I'll say, great, thanks for submitting your email. Now that we've put everything together, let's test it out. As a reminder, I've got the emails table over here. And as an example, I have soup at gmail.com already listed. So for my first test, I'm just going to say hi, get prompted for my email and input soup at gmail.com. And we see that since we already have it on file, I get sent down that path. To verify that this is working, let's try with a different email. So this time I'll try stu at gmail.com and we see that we get the correct message indicating that our email has been accepted. Let's verify that all this happened correctly in our table. So over here, we see that soup at gmail.com still only has one record and the newly created record is stew at gmail.com. Pretty cool. Happy bot building.